casting Who McCall? succeeded at Moline casting McCall? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of wiggles. Right, okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about Molds first, then I'm going to do a demo. Um, I'm going to do a demo of a, a rotor cast. It's not going to be the best rotor cast because I'm stuck for time. Oh, so I can't do this beautiful multi layer. Instead, I'm okay, I have to be there an hour before it starts. <sighs> okay. So we'll do the roll early. Yeah. Okay. Right, there are several different types of mold that you can make. Uh, you can make very simple molds, very simple things, you can make very complex molds, all sorts of different materials that you can make molds of. Uh, Should we, starting at the absolute beginning, yeah. when, what situations would one want to make a mold for? Um, Basically, yeah. anything. So, so let's say, I mean, I suppose this would be a good example first. Let's say you're really hopeless at embroidery. <laughs> um, and not only are you hopeless, you're smart enough to glue felt down to foam. So there's absolutely no way that you'll be able to actually get a needle and actually even half arts do an embroidery. So, what you do is you put your sculpting skills to use and you sculpt something that looks like this in clay and you make a mould. This is what's called a flat mould. So, basically what I've done is on a big glass, you know you get them glass chopping boards? We found one in a skip. Brilliant for this, we found one in a skip, so I didn't even buy one. That's even the, that's the best kind of thing. Um, so I sculpted it on a plain glass sheet. Uh, I then made a little wall of clay right around it, sort of close to the edge, you can kind of see it. I'll pass this around for people to have a look at. Uh, and then in the little, so I basically got a little reservoir with a little sculpture in, I then just poured silicon in. We'll talk about the kinds of silicons. Yeah, there's different kinds of silicons. Uh, I'll get into that. And waited it for, for it to cure, popped it out, poured it full of liquid plastic, which is something I'll be showing you in a minute, and bish bash bosh, you're hopeless. You could never do that. It's, it's hopeless and terrible. Actually becomes quite a convincing thing on the side. I'm going to give this talk some structure. Yeah, right. So, there are three steps. When, when you want to cast something, four steps. First, you decide that you want to do it. Yes. Some things, it's very good to, good to do as casts. Other things, it's less suitable. Some of it, a lot of it depends on how much money you've got. Yes. Because if you want to, if you want to cast a lot of very large objects on costumes, are wonderful if you cast them. But, for example, casting an entire helmet is quite expensive. Casting a space marine head or a space marine you could do it. For films, they would do it, but they would probably spend two thousand pounds just on the molds. Um, so there's a lot of things. There are, that there are cheaper ways to do the molds, but the cheaper you go, the less definition you get, the more errors you'll get. Um, get into that in a minute. Yeah. So you decide what you want to do. If you're just starting out casting, things like jewelry objects, things like. Um, Especially if you're going to have multiple ones, because if you only have one, it's often worth just making it out of millipedes or fiber or whatever. If you if you need twenty of them, all identical, hanging on a big necklace, it can be worth having a mold and just making casting resin. The other nice thing with resin is if you lose or break it, you can just make a new one quite easily. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that are good for casting: helmets. This is a cast helmet made from a sculpt. Apologies on the finish; it's falling off. Yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> I, I think it looks quite cool. I think it's weathered. People say it looks carbon scorched and things. I think it looks like the other buds coming up because yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Say, Look how shiny it is. Um, on this head, cool. the face, just as kind of a mask, is cast in resin. Again, that lets you make multiple copies of it. Um, these are resin. Which is, I didn't. I wasn't convinced by that, but it actually worked very well. Um, you can do resin. Oh, oh that's just the core. Yeah. Do resin eyes? Really big eyes? Yeah, because if you're doing something like a big creature and you want a nice big eye and you don't want it to be flat or anything or look like it's painted on the surface, you can do some really clever stuff which I'll get into later. I, we haven't brought everything that we cast. We often cast claws for fursuits, uh, jewellery fixings. When I did Kimari uh, a couple of years ago, all of his large jewellery fixings were actually cast in latex because I needed them to be flexible and soft and extremely strong. Latex is actually a very good material for that sort of thing. Uh, it's got its limitations, but it does have a lot of good uses as well. Um, so yeah, so you decide to cast. Alright, next step is to actually 
you make the thing? Clays. Yeah. So clays, you'll find. I mean, there, there are other ways to do things. You can construct something out of solid material, cast it, and whatever. That doesn't really factor into the mold making process proper, really, because then it's, it's just an easier way to do it. Uh, nothing wrong with easier. Sometimes easier is much better. Um, your most common clay and your cheapest clay are water clays. Um, I personally go for a slightly better water clay called wet clay, purely because it smooths nicer. It's what Hollywood uses. What you get a lot of it is it's 15 quid for a great big block, and yeah. it goes a long way. I mean, this was made of wet clay over the original. This was made of wet clay over a life cast, and it probably only used about five as worth of wet clay. And it's somewhat reusable if you're willing to recondition, but not perfectly reusable. Yeah. Um, there's, very, there's three basic kinds of clay. Water clay, which is just the stuff you dig up out of the ground and they refine it. It's what earthenware is made of, porcelain, uh, terracotta, that sort of stuff. Uh, you work with it wet, with water. Uh, so you spray it. As, but when as you, it work with, you don't want it saturated, yeah. but you want it sort of like... Uh, there's there's, there's you, plenty you know how, of guys you know how, how dirt feels when it's wet, but it's not soaking and flooded. Basically, you want it like that. We never want so everyone like, to use clay. Yeah. yeah. It's basically yeah, that. Damp. Um, but when, when you're casting from that, the problem with that is if you let it dry out completely, it'll start to crack and fall apart. So you actually have to make a cast when it's sort of leathery. And you also have to seal it with with a, 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 like a um, gloss varnish or something like that, spray varnish. Purely because that then actually gives you a seal over the clay and will actually keep quite a lot of the yeah. humidity. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible to make a mould from that without sealing, but you wouldn't want to do that for anything that's going to be a surface. So, for yeah. example, if you're making the inside of the fursuit head and you were going to fur it afterwards, you can put the silicon straight onto the clay, yeah. but you will pick up a lot of the clay and the dirt with the silicon and it's not going to have a good finish. Yeah. Um, oil clays. These are when the dirt portion of the clay is dried out completely into a powder, basically. And instead of hydrating it with water, they mix it with various oils. And waxes. The most common form of this is plasticine. You've all played with plasticine. Never dries out, stays the same. You can heat it up to make it easier to work. And if you cool it down, it becomes very hard. There's something they don't tell you that you can also work plasticine with oils or solvents. Uh, my my favourite is actually cooking oil. It's not ideal for a good surface, but it will give you um, a little bit of slickness so that you can smooth it out a lot more. Uh, a heat gun to keep it hot. Uh, you can well, microwave it. it. If, as long as it isn't something like Chavant, which, uh, Chavant Potouche, which has actually got a glue in it. If it's the other versions of Chavant or some of that monster clay, uh, you can actually take a blowtorch to the surface and be very quick and melt the surface into a, into a high gloss. But you can do that with Chavant, but not with a blowtorch. No, yeah, heat gun. You, you don't get quite as good at yeah. that because anyway, you're not melting. Uh, so oil, oil plays, they never dry out. It's a great advantage. Uh, they're reusable, so you can salvage it from your mould and 90% of it. Sometimes you'll get little bits of grit in it, but that's still good for the core of a mould, just not for the skin. Uh, yeah. The core of a cut sculpt. What you'll normally find is what you'll do is you'll do the base sculpt and then you'll use the <laughs> surface. We even say you can pick crumbs and rubbish out. I mean, basically, unless you're doing something that has to be mechanically perfect, if you're doing a creature or something, old clay is absolutely fine. Yeah. As long as it's not full of fluff, but most of mine is. Um, polymer clays. Um, these are generally used for final pieces, but they can actually be very useful for sculpting, because you can sculpt your piece, and you can cook it so it goes hard, like Fimo or um, Sculpey. And if, you want, if you're not so certain about making a mould, if you, if you cook it so it's hard, you can then make, make the mould and not have any risk of accidentally digging the surface. Because one of the problems with water clays and oil clays is when you're actually putting on the silicon layer, if you accidentally, you know, if you're spreading it on with a spreader, you know, you can completely destroy the surface yeah. of the sculpture and you've wasted a huge batch of silicon. Also, the one thing that you've got to remember is when you're using soft clays, don't expect when you do a demold for your beautiful sculpture to be exactly how you how it was when you put the actual stuff, yeah. whatever you're using to cap. I mean, generally, generally after you've taken the mould off, the, the uh, original sculpture is scrapped and, and recycled or yeah. thrown away. Yeah. But um, sometimes it can be nice to have that available. For example, if you were making, say you wanted to mass produce claws for a fursuit, 
if you make a solid master out of polymer clay or um, wood, Milliput. milliputs, modelling putty, um, whatever, then you can make a mould, take the claw out, make another mould, take the claw out, get ten moulds, so that when you actually come to cast a batch of claws, mix up one batch of silicon, dush, 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 resin. loads of it, sorry, resin, um, you can cast found objects. Yeah, I mean, let's say, let's say for instance you want a gem for a, a costume, and you want a red gem, and you want it to be a specific shape, and this, that, and the other, and you're not very good at sculpting that sort of thing, but you really want a gem, you go into the shops, and you look around, and you go, there's the gem that I want, but it's black. That's not very useful, that's not very good. You can then take that gem, obviously, stick it onto a base, make a mould, take it out, you've got a mould of that shape there. So you can then get some nice clear resin, put it into the, put, put a little bit of red pigment in, you get clear pigments, and you can get yeah. uh, opaque pigments. We'll talk about that one. Uh, yeah. And, ooh, Bob's your uncle, you've got a red gem now. Uh, we'll go into clear casting as well, yeah. because there's different ways to do that. We're going to have to start that cast at about half past if I'm going to take it. Yeah. Tag, what time do we have to be at the Amaki? I said 12, I'm pacing on a massive tech park up with her. Yeah. Um, so. But if so I, yeah, just, we'll, we'll get I can on. just leave and stand around. Yeah, but we'll get cracking on that. So. Yeah. We'll get cracking on that. Right, anyway, so, um, some, some of the more advanced people make masters that are not made of clay. Um, you can make them out of, you can, you can do Pekakura for masters, that works yeah. very well. So, um, yeah, so let's say, let's say you Does want everyone know to... what Pekakura is? Who doesn't know? Right, right okay. Pekakura. You know they have 3D models in games made of little triangles called polygons. Uh, there is a program that will collapse those into a flat yeah. thing that you can then build. When, when they're making really? paper craft, that's what Pepakura is, paper, paper craft. it's a Japanese thing. Yeah. Um, but they use it for making paper craft. You print, so you collapse the model flat, print it out on your printer onto cardboard, cut it out, build it up again, it work together 3D again. model. You've got a 3D model which you can then fiberglass, uh, fill, a, fill the surface to make it all nice and smooth. And then, I mean, you'll know about this one. <laughs> then you go, <gasps> uh, that needs to be lighter. So what you can then do is, if you've got really deep pockets, uh, get an awful lot of silicon and, and fiberglass, more fiberglass, make a silicon mold of that solid object, make a nice big fiberglass mold that becomes plaster gets a bit, you'll hear the term plaster mother molds. We'll tell um, you plaster mother molds when they get bigger tend to not work. They just or you have to what, or you have to let them try. Kind of no, well, yeah, you have to go so thick that you need machinery to actually lift them. Um, so then, what you can then do is you can go aha, screw you, you've got carbon filler and fiberglass. You're way too heavy. I'll cast it in polyurethane, which is a lot lighter. I'll put some filler powder in it, which will make it lighter still. Brilliant. And then, of course, then if you're walking around a convention and some spotty herbert runs into you and knocks something off and smashes it, you go, you, you jerk, I was just about to be judged in this. <laughs> but then you can still go home and go, I should make a new one. And what you tend to find, for example, people, people, who do, people who do, say, Halo cosplay, <coughs> you'll see people talking about Pepakura. All of the really high-level costumes, yeah. are, they are not wearing anything that contains any fiberglass or paper or mondo. They have done that, and then they have taken a mould of it and made casts. And they probably kitted out an entire group of friends <coughs> from the same set of moulds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very, very see, expensive whenever time. You see the, whenever you see the perfect Papakura stuff, and people say, yes, I did it from Papakura, there is, it's polyurethane from a mould that they have taken of a... That steps place. and steps and steps, each step costing more than the last. Yeah, I mean... It's an expensive process, but like I say, if you've got deep pockets, do it. And the other, it's, the other common, the other common non-clay master, um, there's, there's two other ones. Uh, CNC milled objects. A CNC mill is basically a machine where you put in a lump of stuff and it turns it into an object yeah. using mid tiny it, drills. Again, you, you use basically the same thing. Controls. It's a it's a it's a three D it's a three D um, computer model which you tell the computer that hey, it looks like this. 
and then basically it's like this little drill that moves around and it will cut the object out of a block of whatever you put in it. It can do wood. So some can do wood, some can do plastic, some can do metal. Plaster. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. all to do with how about wood. A mill? Yes. Um, yes. You'll find that some university departments have them. Some people build their own, some people own small ones. There's a few, quite a few private individuals who bought them or made them. Um, a lot of universities, some schools have them now. There are no yeah. spaces around where you can sign up and they'll let you use everything like that. Yeah. Is, yes. Uh, lathes, the, the other way around is uh, rip making space. I was, just about, yeah. I was just about to go on to that. You can actually make a sort of CNC machine called a rep rep. No, no, that's a 3D printer, that's the opposite. Yeah, yeah, a rep yeah. builds a CNC subtracts. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, but it works the opposite yeah, yeah. way. Sorry. Let me finish my sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven's sakes. What that does is rather than taking a solid object and carving it in, it actually uses essentially hot glue. It's plastic. And what it does is it melts down hot glue and it just does little tiny dots. And it'll just build them up into an object and you've got this wonderful object which you can just finish off, put a little bit of filler in because it's a bit rough, and make them up. Yeah, they tend to be, that tends to only work for smaller objects though. When, when, when you're talking about really big stuff like armour, one of the most common things to do is actually carve it out of insulation foam by hand. Where are Mars models? We're, we're going into this later. We'll go into we'll, that. We'll go into we'll this go later. Into that where I'm actually. Um, and shit burns. We didn't actually bring the goggles, did we? No. Um, uh, because... But yeah, so the pink insulation foam you can get, it's very easy to carve. Um, so you carve it and then you fill it with, make sure the filler doesn't melt it. If it's a filler that will melt it, you have to seal it. A really, really good trick when you're doing, when you're doing something in foam is to have cheap polyurethane resin. Polyurethane, not polyester. And you can actually put a little layer of polyurethane over foam and it won't melt it. But car really car body filler is quite a vicious substance. Because um, when, when, you're, when you're sealing and filling stuff, it's, it's using car body filler. It's not using polyfiller or anything. Yeah, it's using car, car body filler. Car body filler is basically polyester resin with lots of crap. But so basically, it's, it's very solventy, it's very sort of fumy and unpleasant, yeah. and it will melt it has, some things. It has this in, which is a bottle of death. <laughs> Why did you bring that? Uh, because I couldn't bring the resin and this doesn't have nasty gas, but it is actually don't fuck the stakes. Certain things, I mean, we'll go on to this. Well, yeah, we're going to go into safety that. soon. Uh, in fact, while you're rolling the model, I'll talk entirely about safety. Yeah. Um, okay. If you want to get, get ready to roll the model now. Yeah, uh, well, we'll do, we'll do molds first. Right, so, yeah, you've got your master, so uh, you need to make a mold of it. Right, so you've got different options. Sorry, are there any questions? Yeah. Any, any questions, questions, questions about making the actual sculpture, the master? Because it's, it's called a master, a mould, and a cast. Those are the three objects you've got. The master What's is the sculpture. Favourite release agent. I've got some um, PVA stuff that's like Polyvinyl blue. alcohol. Yeah, so, right. Um, it, it very much depends on the materials you're using. And I've got a spray thing. I've never like used a release agent like in my life so. at this point. Yeah, depends on what you're doing, depends on what you need it for. Um, you can use that sort of stuff. It's not actually like the glue. Completely it's, different chemicals. It's, yeah, it's not polyvinyl acetate, it's polyvinyl alcohol. It's just really annoying that they abbreviate it exactly the same three <laughs> letters. Um, there's waxes, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, a lot of materials um, don't need to be released. Like, yeah. for example, you can put silicon straight onto shavant. It's fine, it doesn't need a release and agent. You can, put, you can put plastic straight into silicon. Silicon <laughs> self-releases. Except for when he's cast silicon into it, but we won't go there because that's very complicated. Right, so. So, yeah, so your materials that you can make casts in. Very, very simple, first basic one. It's plaster. So, if you're going to do something like a latex object or a silicon object, or to some extent certain other things, but you'll probably kill the mold in the process. Possibly just about work. Yeah, it's, if you wet it, absolutely soak the mould when you're doing something hard into it, um, like, a, like a resin or a hot glue, it'll work, but you do run the risk of just destroying the mould. You do run the risk of locking nothing. in and getting nothing out I've, I've done that before, I've, I've thought, yeah, I can do this, I can do this, no problem, and now I've gone. Um, 
So yeah, so plaster mould. Uh, this is actually the mould for the eyes of my Skeksis because I did the eyes separately. So these are actually just an eyelid and basically what I did, I mean this is kind of a little bit of a technical mould uh, with the smallest plastic plaster mould I could grab. Um, but yeah, so... You grab some of my four pebbles. Like I was saying with that one, uh, it's very, very simple. What you basically do is, I actually used, I used, used a tub for this. So I did my sculptures, popped my sculptures into a tub, uh, built up uh, clay around them, then just poured the plaster in and just made sure there was no air bubbles with a little brush. Um, it's a very simple plaster. Um, once you've played with it, I mean, every step, every step of the way, always have a play first, don't go into a final object because you'll get very demoralised when it goes wrong. Do small little things, experiment, learn through doing, and you'll go, ah, actually, really simple all along. You're going to run out of time to do more. Yeah. Um, next step up, really, if you're going to do something solid, you really need a flexible mould. It helps. Yeah, so, for um, example, this, this mould here is a flexible silicon mould. Yeah. But because silicon flops everywhere, you need to make something called a mother mould, which we'll get onto in a bit. Right, so, everyone's heard of latex. This is a latex mould. This is actually a reinforced latex mould. What I've done with this, if you're doing something small, it's fine, you can just do a little latex mould. Just paint the latex on, wait half an hour, it'll dry. Keep it thin. Latex, latex likes to be th done in thin coats. You'll find if you slap it on dead thick, it'll take days to dry. If you slap it on really thin, it'll take half an hour to dry, and you'll be able to get twice as much on it. You can dry the space with the hair. Time. And you can dry it with the hair. Just make sure it's not hot enough to burn yeah. you. Just be very, very quick over it, and it will dry out. Also, just a warning, it does not come out of fabric. No, no, it doesn't. Actually, it does if you wash it enough and leave it in sunshine, because it starts rotting. You know, it's good if you cover it in enough baby oil, but then you stain your fabric. Yeah. yeah. Just leave it in really, really bright sunshine, it just rots it really fast. Um, so yeah, so this is a this is a reinforced one. So what I've done with this is I've had my original object. Yeah. So I sculpted something that essentially looked like this, but significantly less red than fiberglass. Maybe clay. Um, so yeah, so that was actually sculpted in wet clay originally. So we'll pretend that that was wet clay. So it's all grey instead of red. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really sculpt it because they don't last beyond making them. Um, so then, painted latex all over, and then what I've done is I've got car cleaning pots that you can buy from Wilco's, they're like miles long, you get tons of them, they're a couple of quid, and you just layer them on, um, similar to how you do fiberglass, if anyone's done fiberglass in, but you do it in nice big sheets, and what you get then is actually quite, it's, it's still floppy, but it's quite rigid and quite solid, and it doesn't want to stretch, because it's got that Security latex does have a degree of shrinkage if you're not careful. Yeah, latex, away. latex does have its problems. Latex will rot. Um, keep it out of sunshine uh, and it will shrink. So that's latex. It's very easy, like I say, play around with it, you'll realise it's actually very, very safe and just don't get it in your eyes, it really Although stinks. it's not, do be aware that you may be allergic to yeah, it. Yeah, you can be allergic to so latex. So make sure you know your allergy status. Also smells like cat piss. It does smell yes. like cat piss. I'd say it's cat piss and cat vomit. And then, it, and then your house shit. starts smelling like old condoms. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Seriously, I, I it's actually a close paint on your arms. But of all the things they use, it's probably the nicest. Yeah, there's a big chunk of snow out of it. Also, if you get it on your skin, it will remove the hair from just, your skin for about two weeks. just make a small, up, a small piece of it with the stems No, no, washing up it with just it's too late now. instantly, so it won't pull any hair. I don't need them again. Um, the big step up in material from latex is silicon. And silicon is wonderful, mainly because, ignoring the fact that I'm broken, it's actually incredibly tough. It lasts for ages, you can do dozens and dozens of pulls, it's very professional, you'll get much better surfaces. It doesn't shrink, well, there's two different types of silicons. Platinum cure silicon doesn't shrink. It will be exactly how you left it. The silicon comes as a, it comes as yeah. a goop, 
and then you add a catalyst, you mix it together, and it will be any, any viscosity from sort of tomato soup to <coughs> water. butter. Water. No, because you can with the spreadable stuff. Oh, the spreadable stuff, yeah. You, you can get extraordinarily thin silicon, which is really good for high detail, but just go for the cheap stuff. Tinsel, well, cheap. tinsel spray 25 is what I use for pretty much all my moulds. Because I bought a big pack of it. Yeah, and, and, and I just carried on. No, I just carried on buying them. Oh, is it? What, what, no, what did I have? Is that the same stuff the I same have in the big thing? Yeah, Isn't that one a two part and not a catalyst one? Well, one that one no, part is sort of catalyst because you get a little bottle of catalyst as well. Oh, okay. uh, they all have ratios as well. Strict ratios, try not to get the ratios too wrong. There's a little bit of tolerance, um, but if you put too much catalyst in, it won't cure. If you put too little catalyst in, it won't cure. You'll just end up with a goop. And what you will find is the ratio by volume and the ratio by weight will be different because they have different densities. Yeah. Uh, See, I like to do my weight, read, same, like, same read, like to do my read what it actually says on the bottle. This particular one is mixed by. Mix ratio by weight is 10A to 100B. So you get a little set of scales and you weigh it. Don't guess. Guessing is terrible with silicon. You'll fail. Some are by volume, but the only time by volume is useful if it's exactly one to one by volume. If it's anything other than one to one by volume, just do it by weight. Yeah. If you also be careful how much cast is put I know. Well, has to you put too much and get hot mix, it catches fire. Uh, you don't get that with silicon, so that's why oh, right. resins. Oh, right. Silicon's don't heat up, do they? No. 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 Just silicon. Silicon. Okay. Silicon's a silicon. You can, you, can, uh, you can put platinum cure silicon straight on your skin and let it cure. Tin, don't do that. It's a really bad idea. <laughs> it will actually poison you a little bit. Oh, no, it will poison you. It will just give you a really nasty rash, that's basically. Well, it's got a shit ton of really, really potent alcohol. Stuff like that, because that, that's what all. Anyway, so. So, yes, anyway. So then you get. Floppy. Well, this is a combination mold, is the proper term for it, but no one ever uses that term, but I think it sounds really cool. What you'll find is silicon, like Karen said, is very, very wibbly. Now, if you. If you not rekey it. Now, if you pour your resin or whatever you're casting, wax <laughs> if you're really freaky, um, you want to make a lion shaped candle. Actually some people uh, work as a, as a master. Yeah, 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 that's, that's very jewellery wax. Yeah. 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 No, no, you can, get, no, you can get tiny you jewellery wax. Won't I mean, make uh, possibly if you hold it really carefully you might get a good cast but no, you, won't. you won't really, you'll get distortions. I mean. It, you can kind of see how that's sort of sagging. So you have, you basically have two choices. Either you make a block mould out of silicon, which will cost you about hundred pounds. The solid cost hundred pound. That is a block mould. They are block moulds. Basically, I have taken uh, an object which looked like that, plop, big walls around it, poured it in, glued, solid thing. There's a reason for doing a block mould for this thing that I'll explain. So that's a block mould, that's a skin mould, so you make a skin. Because so doing a layer is too tense on skin because um, uh, I find, at least the silicon I was using, it would only do a thin layer and the more you try and build it just kind of blurts. Yeah, you, but you can, yeah, do, it you, can, you, can do, you can do multiple layers of silicon right. so long as you do them quickly. Yeah, what your best bet on layering up silicon actually is, is do a thin, what they call an encapsulation layer. So you've encapsulated the detail. And that's with a very, um, a very, that's dual, quite a, a very, very thin very silicon. Thin silicon. Then you get something called a fixotropic agent, or a fixo. Um, the normal one that you'll find if you're using tin is called tin fix. And the clues in the name, fix, thick. <gasps> it's a bit of a different word. So yeah, so it thickens it. It's a thickening agent for silicon. Uh, you can get thickening agents for latex as well. They're not interchangeable. Don't use latex <laughs> in silicon or silicon in latex. It Excellent. won't work. You'll make a mess. Um, and then what you'll actually find is you've got a butter rather than a liquid. It's almost like spread so icing. Just, I mean, you can kind of see on this how this has kind of been spread. But you can just spread I it. I mean, actually, you can actually sculpt I'm it, kind of going off that stuff because it makes it really difficult to key into the mother mould. I'm kind of more of a fan of multiple thin layers now. But it's, it's, it's horses for horses. 
I don't like doing keys. I the, no, I, I, I'm not going to key as much anymore. <laughs> that one's got less keys than some of my old ones. Yeah. Anyway. So what you do, what you do um, is you make a hard outer. Now, this is a plaster one. There are different ways of doing the hard outer. The cheapest one is plaster. The most common one is plaster. This is plaster bandage. So this is plaster bandage. You get it on rolls. Uh, it's the same stuff they put you in when you break your arm. It, well, they, they use, they use fiberglass tape now, but you know, what they used to use. Um, you do half first. So well, you've done half. The reason you do half is because this is an object with undercut. Sometimes yes. you can get away with a single yeah. one. Sometimes you need ten pieces. Yeah. It really depends you on have the to, You have to look at your sculpture, and there's no way of me describing the best way to do every single thing, because there's a million different options. Can we do that while the mould, the object you're casting is still inside? Yes. 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 So. Don't take the silicon off, it won't work. You'll just end up with a weird shaped shell instead. Uh, so yeah, so the silicon is still on the object at this stage. You've not picked it. Don't even be tempted to go, is it too Because you'll just distort it and it'll end up bad. Uh, so you do half first on, on something like this. Um, and the thing with plaster, stick, certain things will stick to themselves very, very efficiently. Plaster, plaster loves sticking to itself. So if you went ahead and just went, uh, you would find, oh, actually now it's just a one part mold. So, and this is the easiest thing to find of all wonderful things, you, get, you go into boots, you get a nice big tub of Vaseline, you put it on the counter, you don't make eye contact. <laughs> uh, because why would you need so much of the stuff? You have the money over or your debit card if you don't mind knowing your name. Uh, and then you walk out. Or buy it on eBay. Yeah. Or you buy it on eBay. <laughs> Save the shame. You can buy buckets of Vaseline on eBay. Yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> so you don't need to see the Vaseline over the whole thing. That'll just make it gross and horrible. Just so do the edge. Just do the edge where you're going to be plastering over. And then what you do is you do a plaster section there, plaster it over, a second plaster section, fish I mean, there's brush. other ways of doing the join. You can build up a wall so it abuts. You yeah. can overlap it with, with yeah, the backside. There's different ways of doing it. You, what you, another way you can do is you can do what's called the wall method, where basically, rather than doing like this, like this overlaps, we do this because it's quick and simple. Uh, what you can do is after you've done the mold, you can make a little clay wall, a little clay wall, make it look like a strange punk, a bit like that. Um, and then you do the plaster up. So the plaster comes up, it's like a little L shape. Then when you come to make the second part, you pick away all the plaster, all, all the clay, uh, Vaseline the inside edge, and then do that. Uh, you can you can do this with fi with fiberglass as well. If you're going to make something that you're thinking, right, okay, I'm going to make a Master Chief helmet and make loads of money off Microsoft's back and possibly get sued because that's what they're doing a lot they, these days. Are they, are they, um, yeah, seriously cracking down. Uh, even even the models now they're seriously cracking down because they're sick of people making Master Chief helmets and people aren't buying theirs instead. Oh yeah, because those fit so well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can do it, rather than doing it with plaster, because plaster will die eventually, you can do it in fiberglass instead. And you get a nice solid mold. When you do it in fiberglass, you have to do the wall. Uh, you can't do the overlay. The nice thing with fiberglass is it's so strong, when you've got the two bits of butting, you can then drill holes and bolt it together yeah. with actual bolts. When so it's doing, very, very professional. When you do the fiberglass, you have to use release agents though. Vaseline won't work because it'll just melt the Vaseline away. You have to do a layer of PVA and then, I don't know where it's gone, I swear I brought it with me, but liquid wax. Liquid wax, I mean we're going into the more expensive side of things now. Liquid wax is very expensive, you get shipped on it and it lasts forever. So if you think you're going to be doing a lot of it, it's actually a very good investment. If you think you've got your hands up, it's really... Because I keep seeing out the corner of your eye and it's something like that. Because you've got your ears on. So yeah, so now we've got a mould. Brilliant. Is that keyed? It's keyed. It's all done. I'll take it. take on that one, but let's 
I'd much rather have tape on it. So, of course, the, the mould won't stay, it's two parts won't stay together. So, I personally use masking tape. I don't know where my masking tape was, so I just brought it. It'll do the same. Although it doesn't so, stick to the yeah, so you have to, you have to do some... Yeah, so, so if this was made of fiberglass, uh, you'd have bolted it together. Yeah, it wouldn't be bolted. You can bolt plaster ones together as well, but like I say, yeah, this is an easier no, way to cook it. away. Guess who's good? It's not good. With the fire. We'll just go to a furry. They'll do improper things in it. <laughs> right, so Zay so is going to yes. do a live cast. I'm going to put this on the table for you to roll over. Yes, I don't want you guessing. Not I actually roll, roll over. Roll over. Oh, yeah. You can use as a, as a <laughs> yeah. chip. What you can do is if you mix, just yeah. pour a little bit in there. <laughs> so, I'm going to chat to you about the different resins we use. So, the resin that we're using here is a First things first. <laughs> I was going to say that in a minute. Yeah. Safety. Gloves. Safety. Right. The silicones are fairly safe. They're really messy though. Use gloves if you want to. I would. Our gloves of choice are disposable blue nitrile gloves. Yes. Silicon hates latex. Keep silicon the fuck away from latex. If you touch latex during the day before you're going to use silicon, go to the bathroom, wash your hands. You also shouldn't. Latex is easy. It's best, unless it's absolutely necessary, it's best to avoid wearing latex gloves anyway. Yeah. Because latex is latex. a sensitizer. The more you wear latex gloves, the higher your chance of developing an allergy. So anyway, blue so nitrile gloves. Nitrile. Don't use them with acetone, they'll fall apart. They're not as stretchy as, as latex, but they're not evil. They're single use. They're single yeah. use. I sometimes use them a few times, but they um, don't disintegrate fairly quickly. The beauty of nitriles is that you could use them for everything. So you can use them for your resin, Silicon, yeah. you can use them for your fiberglassing. So, I'm going to talk about Everything. materials. Yes. Be advised, some people do have a nitrile allergy. Can you really? actually get nitrile allergy now? Damn. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. It's like one in 100,000. Okay. Yeah. Just in case. We get them from a website first, called Just Gloves. <laughs> yes. Just Gloves. .co.uk, I think. Which sell top glove. Top quality, top efficiency, good health, safety first, and be honest. <laughs> <laughs> These actually make really good reading because they have the best oh, English in the world sure. ever. But, yeah, if you buy your gloves from like a craft shop or a supermarket, you'll be paying about 15 times as much than if you buy them in bulk. Boxes of 100, that's 50 pairs because they're, they're ambidextrous, they're identical, left and right. So, we'll start with, we'll go through the materials in order of safety. I don't know about most of the release agents, but I know about most of the resins. Yes, I'm just going to mention what I'm doing here. Polyurethane resin needs agitating. Don't, 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 don't get your polyurethane resin and go... Because it'll fill with bubbles. Because you'll just fill it with bubbles. When you're agitating, gentle rocking action, circular motion, gentle rocking action, I'm going to be doing that in this later. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. Casting. All of the Casting. chemicals will remix in the bottles and you'll actually get a nice white plastic rather than a gungy yellow plastic and then rubbish in the bottom of you. So, after six months. reasonably safe materials. Latex is reasonably safe as long as you're not allergic. Uh, silicone, tins, uh, platinum silicone is basically safe. Tin silicone, you should wear gloves, but it's reasonably safe. Um, resins. It's poison. No. Well, yes. Actually. Well. Yes. So I have BJPs. I know what's in that shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we'll start. The kinds of resin that you can use: polyurethane resin. This is. These are the white. Generally, the white resins. Um, they are low odor, reasonably straightforward to use, simple to mix, fairly nice. Polyester resins. These are the ones that are used with fiberglass and for laminating. They are vicious and will kill you. Then you have things off. like styrene resins, which are the clear ones. Well, there's various different kinds of clear resins. Basically, my rule of thumb is anything other than polyurethane resin, overdress. So we'll start with polyurethane. Polyurethane resin is a polyol. 
It's two part. It's generally a re something close to a one to one ratio. It's a polyol, which is kind of like an alcohol chemically, and a chemical. Generally, they use methyl 4 4 methylene diphenyl dioxide cyanate. Say that when you're drunk. Could you spell that for me? I probably could. Uh, oh. It's spelled M D I, actually. The, the, the abbreviated word name is M D I. It's a diisocyanate. You might recognise the word cyanate, it's related to cyanide. Yeah. Yellow goes crusty sometimes it jams the bottom. Because that is MDI. Yeah. It goes crusty because it reacts with moisture in the air. What you will find is if you've got a very small amount at the bottom, each time you open it, moisture, moist atmosphere will get in that will react quite strongly with the MDI. What it does mean is that MDI is not reactive in the environment because it's it, it's completely, you can pour like you can pour it into a fish tank and the fish won't die because it reacts so quickly with the water that it forms an inert, I mean duh. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, will, it will fall down. But it will probably kill your fish. <laughs> 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 but it reacts into like this. Problem here. It reacts, it reacts <laughs> to form, um, I think it's a kind of urate or something, it's like a, a, a nitrogen based compound that's reasonably inert. But anyway. Right. Top tip, if you're lazy like me, don't be. Uh, and you don't want to use scales, use cups with little. Because then you've got to draw markers. Look, they're the perfect. No, I'll do it in small batches. Okay. I'll do it in two small batches. Because then you get better. Just make sure uh, it's enough to actually make a good mark. So, yeah, so you can actually figure out if you're going to use the same cups to. Um, you know, if you go halfway up and you've got a nice little mark. Just make sure you get all the residue out at the bottom. Yeah, just make sure, yeah, make sure there's no so, scum. Anyway, MDI, 4-4-methylene diphenyl diisocyanate, it is what is known as a sensitizer. We've talked about this already. Um, it is a skin and respiratory sensitizer. What that means is, the first time you use it, you're probably fine. Each subsequent time, you are more likely to develop an adverse reaction. At its worst, it has been known to kill, but this is in... It, it, the, only, the only recorded deaths are when people have literally been spraying it um, every day as part of their job, making like trucks, you know, in factories. In the quantities that you use it at home, the actual vapours are pretty much not going to happen because you're using it at room temperature and you're not vaporising it. But, um, but use a respirator. Yeah, better I'm, say being, I'm not using a respirator because I need to talk. And because it's a um, very large room. Because it's a very large room, I can't go like that. But also there's a lot of atmosphere that could be ventilation. As a rule of thumb, if there's any risk at all, just stick a respirator on. Um, you can pick them up for, I think the respirator's about 15 or 20 pounds, and the cartridge, they have interchangeable cartridges. The cartridge you want is rated A1 organic vapour. Right. Rating A1 organic vapour cartridges. You cannot get them from B&Q, but you can buy them on the internet. What? Resin comes in two parts, like we've said. One part is significantly thicker than the other. Normally it's the yellow part that's the thinner. Thicker part in one cup, pour the yellow part in because it's thinner. Therefore, that's so much thinner than the um, screwdriver, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I keep on telling you to get the uh, easy flow. It's better. It does flow easily. Mix it over the box. I do not want this shit down on the floor. Right, the, the resin that Zay is using is a, po a polyurethane resin, like we were saying. It's got this diastocyanate. It is a skin and respiratory sensitizer. If you, if you splash it on your skin accidentally on a YouTube video that you're making because you're an idiot, not us. While um, drunk. While drunk. Um, I'm not will... an advocate, I think he's a bellman now. I'd really like him before that video. I think he's he a does good work, right? He does anyway. do good work, he's a dickhead. <laughs> sorry, sorry, any fans. Um, we're not going to say. We're not going to um, say. Anyway, um, Zay really sh I told you to do this, but he refused. Zay should have long sleeves. Um, buy an old shirt from a charity shop for like a pound, sew up the cuff so there's a big hole there, or get a a uh, lab coat, get a paper suit that you can get for DIY, long sleeves. Paper suit's no use, it's sewn straight through. Yeah, okay. But each, basically, when you, each time you spill it on your skin, you go, oh, it's got some on my skin, it's fine, and it will be. Next time, oh, it's got some on my skin, that's a little bit of a red spot, it's fine. Can I, I need to talk now, stop. Uh, right, <laughs> basically, um, when resin is mixed, it'll start going warm. That's how you know it's mixed. Mix it, don't mix it like you'd mix a cup of tea. Very slowly, very surely, otherwise you'll just put a load of bubbles. When you pour it into the mould, 
long, thin stream. The longer the stream, the better, because it pops all the bubbles. Now, what Zay is doing, what Zay is doing here is a rotocast. He's not filling the mould to the top with resin. He's pouring in a little bit and swirling it around so it gradually coats the walls. The reason he can do this is he's using a resin. You're using Easy Flow 120? Easy Flow 120, yes. You'll find most brands of resin uh, come in two different types. And some companies think it's clever to give it a name. Some companies think it's clever to give it a number. I find the companies that give it a number are the better companies. Well, Spoodon calls it 65D now anyway. So. Yeah, they're trying to be a better company. Anyway, but... a roto resin does what is called slow cure. That means it gradually gets thicker, like, like mixing up a sauce or something. It gradually, gradually gets thicker and will start to get stickier and stickier and stick to the walls. I'll try and turn around and show you what I'm yeah. doing here. I'm just well. basically letting it run. See it all gets a bit gungy. Yeah, you will find it pulls a little bit. That's just this takes a bit of getting used to, especially the first few moulds. You'll find you get massive pulls of it in the nose and stuff. That's just part of the part of the nature of it. What I tend to do these days when I'm rolling a mould is even when it's nearly cured, I won't put it down. I will literally walk around the garage for ten minutes, just moving it so that there's no centre of gravity for it to all fall. Yeah, it won't be moving fast enough to actually spread it. But if you let it have a still centre of gravity, it will very slowly pull down and pull. Yes? Can you like, paint resin? Um, yes. When it's like, it's sort of, when it's like you've got a layer on and then it's sort of... Yes, but there's the risk of it curing so much that you pull it away from the mould while you're doing that. But, you could, but could you use, instead of like a paintbrush, like a spatula? Again, there's, you can, but there is a risk yeah. of... Because it, because it comes, becomes sort of soft and slightly yeah. gooey, there's a risk right. of it catching on itself and pulling the whole thing away from the wall. Once... You, once it sort of starts going super, super thick and it isn't really running anymore, you do fast motions yeah. like this. Like I said, this fast, is just... Fast motions like this will basically, if you've got any like, it will actually flatten them out. So you actually get a nice smooth... And it does also side. mean, again, you're not letting it rest and everything very slowly trickle down into the nose. Yes. Yes. When you're doing the rot rotating, would you allow some of it to spill over the edge? Onto something. It's best, it depends, depends on the mould. Mold. I mean, this, this mould's got a really little. nice lip on it, which actually keeps it in. That's one of the reasons why we picked this mould. I picked it because I want a copy of it to yeah. take home. That, but it's, it's also cheap. less messy. I mean, I was going to do. I, actually, I was going to do that. We'll do that as well. Which is really, got. really clean because it's yeah. flat. Well, if you do that one as well, it's right. happy to see that, that thing. Now what you'll find, you'll probably not be able to see from there, so I'm going to sort of run up so you can kind of see it. I'm going to have to keep rolling though. But it actually starts going white. Well, you're in costume and mine takes like two minutes. It's so all kind of starting to go a little bit white in there in certain places. That means that you're not messing up and being quick. Starting to cure. So the, other, the other kind of cure is snap cure. What will happen there is it will be clear, and it will be runny, and then suddenly you will see a white spot and it will spread in about 10 seconds to cover the entire mold. It's quite cool to watch, it's like watching it's ice really crystals. It starts from the thickest part of the mold yeah. as well. But you'll, sort of you'll actually thing. see a little yeah. white spot appear and then it will in about five seconds. You do not want to use that for rotocasting, it's not so. I mean, That's people do, but it's very actually, difficult to do. It's actually something that I need to errata yes. something you said. I'm um, oh, sorry. Um, it, go, carry on. <laughs> Um, if you're trying to do a mask that's got a lot of like, high detail in the front of it, would you use that kind of mould or would is there a better yes. one? Yeah. So yeah. silicon is very good for capturing Sil detail. Silicon I mean, you best, did your Briarios just exactly the same, but... Yeah. Anyway, sorry, what, what did I say wrong? Um, <clears throat> the two different types of resin are actually fill cast and rotocast. It's not the proper term for it. Okay. It's actually thick cast and thin cast. Okay. Um, the other version of this is Easy Flow 60. Easy Flow 60 is for doing filled moulds. So what that does is it, it cures from the thickest part. Um, Easy Flow 20 cures from the thinnest part. So if you try and do them the other way around, the 60 will go, there's nothing thick, I'm not supposed to be curing yet, and it kind of won't cure properly, and it's very thin every... It's the, the fill casters are water when they start, so it'd be like rolling water around, you don't want to go there. The 120 will go, wow, I'm still in a cup, I'd better take ages to cure, 
and I won't cure properly because it might not actually be right. You'll find the surface goes a bit weird. Um, so yeah, so anyway, back to back to talking about safety. For the polyurethanes, generally reasonably well ventilated room. Uh, the, the vapors are heavy, so don't do it upstairs, so they all fall down the stairs and kill your cats or whatever. Um, vapors are heavy. Uh, wear a respirator anyway, it's probably overkill, but just do it. If you're doing anything casting wise, you should probably pick up a good respirator. Always use scrap objects to, to stir with because yeah. when you stick them down on kitchen towels, they stick to them. <laughs> Um, right, polyester resin. Polyester resin is the devil and it's made out of Satan's piss. Um, it will melt you. It polyester resins are very you. nasty. You, what you want for those is um, you should probably be wearing goggles as well because you can occasionally get scratched back. Everything. Uh, Always wear goggles. Sleeves, gloves, double up your gloves if you can. Um, goggles. Goggles. Respirator, make sure your respirator is peachy and new make sure it fits. And, and fits and is happy and is tight. And seals. That shit, you, you'll do it once and you'll think, oh, what was they talking about? It's fine. And then you'll be doing it in a year's time and you'll fall over and die. Um, more, and more like to That's be fair. not even a joke, it's not a euphemism for being sick. You will well, die. It well, it depends on the, it depends on the person. Yeah, it's, it's not. Better safe than better yeah. safe than sorry. Um, but, Yes. Are there any specific situations where you use that over polyurethane? Use yes. polyester over polyurethane? Yeah. Yes, we'll um, talk about those in a second. Yes. Um, but, what, what was I saying? Um, I've forgotten that. There is actually a fursuit maker in the States who makes a very, very beautiful fursuit with resin heads, and they do a lot of them. And at this point, there are a couple, and at this point, both of them have actually become sensitised to. MDI in the resins because they occasionally got it on their hands or spilt it or whatever. And these days, if they ever spill any on them, they actually get quite a substantial rash because it's a, it's a dermatological sensitizer, it's a skin sensitizer. Um, so that is. Are you going to steal a little bit of that for the other mold? Or are you doing a third batch? I'll do a third batch. Yeah, always do it in layers. Don't think, right, I need X resin. If you're doing a roto, this is a plus. If you're doing fill, just fill it up. Uh, if you're doing roto, don't go, right, okay, I need that much to make a mask, mix a great big litre batch, dump it in. You're better off doing two, oh. about two layers is usually fine, but it depends. I do three. You do three. Uh, um, how long can you leave it between? Not long. It's best to do it all about, in one. About can, five minutes. Yeah, you can't do it in two sessions, it won't stick to itself. It'll stick to itself when it's still, uh, it's called green, when it's still a bit, a bit tacky. But it'll stop doing that when it's a plastic. It'll stick a bit, and then it won't. It'll start to delaminate. I mean, in the sort of second part, when I start talking to you again properly, I'll go into the wonderful things that you can actually do. I won't be able to interrupt him then. So. Yeah, I'll be able to actually talk about the cool shit. Yeah. Um, but there are actually a lot of things. You would, you would definitely use polyester resin for fiberglassing. That's the only can you do fiberglass with polyurethane? You sort of can, but it's shit, don't yeah. try it. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't reinforce it. And if you, if you want effects like clear resins, do they do polyurethane clears these days? They do polyurethane clear, but it's piss yellow. Yeah. Clear uh, because of MDI, MDI is yellow. It will make so if you want to say make a green gem, you could use it, yes. a yellow gem. If you wanted a white gem, if you wanted, purple gem. If you wanted crystal clear, Sorry, yeah. it's polyester and yeah. Greek. But if, say, you were making a monster, he could have yellow eyes, that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Exactly. So it'd be fine for stuff like that. But just, yeah, tailor it to your, to your use. But yeah, so the nastier, the nastier the work, the more safety you need to do. So for polyester resin, I don't know, what, what, what were your precautions for the polyester? Um, I had uh, long sleeves, yeah. double gloves, yeah. like three cups. Yeah. Of yeah. Um, A1 filters. Yeah. And uh, I didn't wear the goggles because I was outside and it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not so bad when you're outside yeah. doing it. I mean, I do, I do lots in a garage, if but you our can... garage is a workshop. Well, you, you, do, you do it with the door open. Yeah, I do it with the door. With and we've also we've got a pedestal fan, we've got a big 16 inch fan that we put behind us <laughs> blowing out. Basically, no precaution is too much with polyester. Um, or indeed with fiberglass if, itself, because it's chopped can, glass. If you can do the stuff in a hazmat suit, because you've got a hazmat suit kicking around, do that. Good yes. job. <laughs> when you're doing stuff like this, does the temperature like, 
temperature around you. Yes. Like, if it's cold, um, it work cold it's warm. The, the colder it is, the longer it'll take to cure. In some situations, that is actually a very good thing. In some situations, it's really fucking irritating because yeah. you just want the shit. They're all, everything is designed. Sure, for God's I believe they're all designed and tested at room temperature, which is about 21 degrees and low humidity. Let's say on Friday. It'll, it'll, it'll take about two thirds of the time to cure. Yes. <coughs> faster in the hot, slower. Faster in the hot, slower and cold. If you if you specifically want it to cure slower, chill it stick first. it in the fridge. If it's not dead, before you mix it, it obviously. Uh, you know, have a have a separate. You get these like little cheap twenty quid coolers. Also, if you have a garage, like store that. your resin indoors. This is for poly polyurethane. Polyester's nasty. For polyurethane, if you've got an open bottle of polyurethane. Store it indoors, but not like in your kitchen. So what we do is we wrap it in a massive load of bin bags. It's seal bottles wrapped in a couple of bin bags in a box under the stairs. So then it's not gassy everywhere, but it's also not getting chilly over the winter because that, that reduces its shelf life. Yes. Uh, I would just like to say with breast breakers, keep them in a sealed container. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to. Yeah, I never do. Um, what you're supposed change, to. I think every 28 days. <coughs> it's it's more it's more use, usage based. Uh, yeah, well, you like, feel it when it yeah. goes. Basically, when you start to detect the smell, <coughs> your filters have gone. Do you use a double or a single door? Double. Yeah. I don't like the way the single sits, it gets in the way. Yeah. But make, make sure it's got a good seal. So if you've got like a great big bushy beard, shave that off first, because that's not going to help you seal it. Or get a full face one. Oh, do you have a full face? Um, I just have one, yeah, I've just got a lazy one. Well, yeah, you, we'll, we'll show you again the, uh, the respirator. So this is a, this is a twin filter respirator. We use the round cartridges, which are actually quite hard to get hold of. A lot of the time they have these sort of oblong cartridges, which you can Hardware get from. Sorry? Hardware shops. Yeah. Some do, some don't. B&Q shit for it. Um, there's uh, <coughs> like a proper um, machine yeah. builder yeah. shop. And, like, machine shop builders merchants, because they use them for painting, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I've got a single filter that I don't store properly, because I only use it for uh, solvent-based glues, which are quite nasty as some of the resins. Uh, but yeah, this is our twin filter. How do you sneeze? You sneeze into it. Just yeah. Yeah. Every every single time we put it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find your. I mean, they'll get they'll get wet. They'll be completely they'll get completely sodden within about five minutes because you're breathing yeah. out into them. Um, but yeah, share. make sure the seal is good. Make sure the intake is clear. Sorry. Don't share them. Yeah. We share. We share. We're not. We share. Sorry. Scratch your nose before you put yeah. it on. Yeah. And if you ever work with fur and stuff, give it a good, give it a good cooper before you use it. Otherwise, it'll be full of fur. I mean, I, I, I really should use this for shaving fur, you know. Because the thing is, it's a, it's a vapor respirator, but it also, of course, works as a dust filter. Yeah. Well, you you should use it. It will reduce it. Sorry. The A1P3. Is uh, that dust as well? Yeah. It's it's both it's for the like fine particles. Well, I figure the fine particles, if it blocks vapor, it's not going to get through. <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it'll wear it out. Yeah, get separate ones for dust if you're doing a lot of like wood work. And Often stuff. Yeah. vapor ones, they have a, a dusty layer that goes in that you can then hoover out if it gets cold. Oh, okay. I just chucked it. Yeah, a pair of cartridges costs about seven pounds. So it's not cheap, but it's not going to break the bank. It's worth it to keep your lungs safe. Yeah. You can buy new filters. Can't buy new loans. Can't buy new loans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're working on I mean, it. The... No, I don't have enough resin. So, so that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain. Yeah, we'll explain. Time's got good visualization skills. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to have to take off soon, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm at five now. Right, so I'm pretty much done on this now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you can see that's got a thick layer of white gunk in it now, it's pretty much solid. Hopefully this is I'll be back. Yes. Can you pass me by? Uh one more. I think you can you can. I don't really know how it works. Yeah, I think you can't fit hot, I don't think I think final is one that you do hot, so obviously you can they make toys out of it, but I think it requires other equipment. Um, so vinyl gloves are also the third option you can't use. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's various glove options available. Um, go on the website and see what they see what they see that you do with the spread. It's just cured and big long because yeah. it's already warm. Absolutely.
Alaska. Yeah. Well, you'll, find, you'll find that as you build up the layers, if you're doing a nice and quick because the mold gets warm because the resin is warm, it actually makes each layer snap a little bit faster. So yeah, firm. Um, yes. so, yeah. This later, basically. Use a piece of polythene. Um, go to some out will codes, you'll find like your sheets and things like that. Mm. Put that down. Oh, okay. Even if it sticks to it, you can just cut it. Oh, off. get a silicone chopping mat when you're chopping it so you can get that one. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice ones for Nike and it's slightly yeah. Anything, I mean, anything <coughs> that like you could mould into, you'll be able to roll onto. So oh. some plastics might be alright. That's not done. <laughs> Right. Has anyone got any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, you have a garage that you work in, but what yeah. if you don't have like, a separate space where you can do this? In reverse order, this is the best options. A decent, nice, open plan, three car garage that's underneath your house. And regular garage for poor people. Actually, our house isn't worth that much money, but it's really cool. It's got to be three car garage and people. Um, shed, door open, always with door open, leave the door open. Even if it's battering down, rain miserable outside, leave the door open. Even if you think it's the same thing, leave the door open. Um, outside, obviously you're gonna to have to time it right. Don't try and cast resin in the rain. It will not work. Humidity, resin, not good bed fellows. Um, I've cast things in my porch before with the door wide, wide open and the back door wide, wide open, and then I've left everything open in the house all day just to make sure everything is out. So basically, you're saying don't ever try and go in your house? Basically, buy a door. If you have to be inside to do it, buy a door. Don't don't even think of closing your doors afterwards. I mean, <coughs> if if you can't find a space, ask people. You know, just like walk around the village a bit, and you go, oh, that person knows got a garage they never used. Oh, got a nice flower. Oh, that's very nice. You, you pick those flowers there. They're really red and everything. Oh, what are they? Oh, interest, interest, interest. Next time you meet them, oh, da 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 da. See, you got a garage. Uh, don't seem to use it much. I'll give you a tenner, is it alright for you? And people will. People will go, ten quid? 
was something that I never used. Yeah, right. I'll buy a night at the pub. Brilliant. Some people ask as well to encourage Yeah. Some people rent garages. So if somebody's got a, if somebody's got a garage to be rented for rent that's open, you know, it'll be 20, it'll be, they, they, they can charge peanuts for them as well in certain places. You can say, look, I don't want it for long, I just want to do some work in it. I'll be, I'll be nice and clean, I'll be nice and tidy, everything will be on Dutch cheese. I just need to do some canister milk, five glass work, won't be any mess, I'd just like it for a week. And they'll go, sure, there you go. Because they want money. And that's why they're doing it. Right, let's talk. Has anyone got any questions? Which uh, regiment is that helmet is made out of that sort of resin, but it's actually made out of the smooth on version, which I despise. Smooth on is very consumery and brandy. Easy flow is more aimed towards professionals, and it's it's actually easier to get hold of, but harder to find. If that makes sense. I don't think it did. Everyone's like, what? Basically, what I'm saying is. It's, it's sold with the intention for professionals to use it, so you won't find it in a shop, or well, you won't find any resins in a shop aside from polyester really, but you won't find, you won't find polyurethane resin in a hobby shop, or some will, you might find one, but it's really uncommon and probably be very expensive. Smooth on is more aimed towards consumers, to hobbyists and people like that. Easy flow is aimed towards Hollywood studios, movie studios, uh, people who are doing rapid prototyping, pros, and it shows it's a much nicer resin. Um, you might have noticed with that it's actually grey inside. You can pigment resin as well. So if you, it, it, like with this, because I was painting this silver, even though it was <coughs> off because I didn't seal it like an idiot, um, I put a bit of black in. Not too much, so it wasn't totally black, but it made it grey. So again, like I was saying before, some idiot comes up to you, knocks it out of your hand, scratches it. Even if it goes through the top layer, the uh, sealant layer, the base coat and everything, it's going to be grey underneath, so it's roughly the same colour. So, you know, you can say, yeah, some more on my hand, it's scratched up. But even in your photos, you're still going to look good. So you can pigment it, you can pigment both types of resin. What paint would you use, or what would you use a pigment with? Say again? What would you use as a pigment with? Is it some type of paint, or...? Uh, it's actually, pig there's polyester pigment, oh, there's okay. polyurethane pigment. Okay. Or again, always use the right <coughs> one. Polyester pigment won't work in polyurethane, polyurethane won't work in polyester. But... Right, anyone else? <coughs> Questions? How do you get, actually get your resin from? Right. You say that it's hard to find. So that it's I get, I don't only get my resin, I get pretty much all my materials from a company called Mold Life. M O U L D Life. Um, there's two websites. There's one that basically shows all their products, and there's another one which is their shop. Um, they are very fast. Um, when you're doing an order, I normally do this bit at the end, but I'll, I'll do it now. Uh, when you're doing an order, work out what you need for your project. Because the problem with a lot of this stuff, it's dangerous hazardous chemicals as far as postage guys are concerned. Postage guys will go, whew, that's not going in Royal Mail, that could go on a courier. Um, yeah, you end up getting charged like 16 quid minimum postage and packaging, which hurts the wallet when you do a project like this or like anything. Um, so work out how much silicon you need, work out if you need any release agents, work out which resins you need, pigments, stirry sticks, if you want to get posh little mixing containers instead of the cheap ass 10p for 20 budget cups from Wilco's. Um, if you need any fixer trove, everything. Put it all down on paper. Visualize your project, what you're doing, write it down, order it all in one go. And if you realize 10 minutes later, mold life is very, very good, what you'll be able to do is just say, I forgot something you order, 
crowd or start a little shit ticket credit card over the phone. You can order online, you can order on the phone. Certain things are safe to mail as well. So if there's something like play that you want from Mob Life, they will actually send it through Royal Mail. Um, but there is only one option on there for postage and packaging. So if you, if, if you see something that you want that you don't want posted, you can phone and say, can I get this posted normally, a bit cheaper? They'll say yes or no to just straight away. Yeah. When creating stuff like the Barrios helmet, yeah. is it always going to be a two-part mould, or do you have to go beyond that? Right, the Briarios helmet is actually a one-part mould. So I was a smart ass and made it in a really, really flexible rough. It actually beautifully led me into the next part. Certain objects have certain shapes. So when I was moulding this, flat as a pancake. I didn't need the mould to flex, I didn't need the mould to turn, I could have made it out of a piece of rock and still picked it out and it would have worked. Although rock isn't really a very good mould material, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, so really, as flippy floppy as this is, completely superfluous to need, I could have used a higher, it's called gerometers. Uh, gerometer of rubber indicates how flexible and stretchy it is. I could have used a much higher or higher or lower. Harder. Gerometer of, um, of rubber, it would have been fine. And then you can go to the direct opposite end of the scale and get silicon. I haven't brought a mold for this, I should have really. And get silicon, which you can literally just go with stretch. Now there's problems with that, but we can get around them. So one piece mold all over, one piece covered it all in silicon. <coughs> uh, two part mother mould, bump, bump, like that. I actually did a supporting mould on this as well, so basically like this little C shape that holds the two mould pieces together. I was just being a clever little smart ass. But basically, because the silicon, that particular type of silicon, it was Platzil Gel 10 I used for the mould for this, it's a lot more expensive than that stuff. The mould for this probably cost about 60 quid to make, because I'm an idiot. Um, I was just able to just go and just pull it off like, like it was a skin. Um, problem is, it's really flexible and it's really floppy. Um, and if you actually look at this casting, this is why this is a test casting. Um, this test casting has a lot of faults and problems with it. Like there's a dent, there's a lot of rippling. There shouldn't be any ripples basically on this. So I know really what I need to do when I go home. Because what I always do is I do a master cast. Again, that's something very, very useful to do when you do your first pull. Do a very, very thick cast once you know that the mold's good. Do a very, very thick cast. Don't clean it, don't take, don't bore any of the holes out, don't tidy it up, don't paint it. Take it, put it in a box and put it on a shelf. That way, when you come to do your prime thing that you're going to wear around a convention or whatever, sell on eBay. If you do it, and then you go, right, okay, I'll take the mould off, pull the mould off, and the mould just goes, splits in two. You go, shit, okay, uh, oh, it was a really bad pull. It's going to cost you a lot more money, of course, but you can go back to your master, your, your master polyurethane that you put in your box, and it's all safe, and it's got no scratches or dust or rubbish on. Poly, uh, Silicon all over that, do a new mould. I mean, you have to do the whole moulding process, but you can mould from polyurethane. So, I mean, that's what Hollywood does. And it's, if it's something that you're going to do really, really seriously and you want archive pieces, like if, you, if you've got aspirations to go and work in Hollywood like I have, um, maybe one day, um, <laughs> it's really, really handy to, have, to archive all of your sculptures as a solid object. Yeah. You said you wouldn't clean up your master mould. Wouldn't you want the master, the master yeah, cast? Your master cast. Yeah. Wouldn't you want your master cast to be perfect so you can recast? Well, when I say clean up, I mean cutting all the edges off like this and cutting all the holes. Say if you've got like, I mean, this has got a lot of air dimples in because, like I said, I was only testing this one. I was only testing the finish and things like that. Um, if you've got air holes, yeah, get in there with a little bit of filler. Uh, you can use a bit of milk or whatever, clean it up, file it down. But yeah, when I say clean up, I mean like cutting the outside. Because the problem is when you cut it too far, uh, it's hard to make a mould off. You want a lip basically all the way around. Um, always, 
That's the other thing. When you're sculpting something like a helmet, um, come in and then make a little lip. Uh, because then when you're making the mould of it, you're not trying to mould around a corner. You don't want to mould around something like that. Um, you want it to come down, step in, and then go down again. For um, it just makes life so much easier when you're doing moulds. Anyway, that's all. Right. Other than polyurethane, you can cast with fiberglass. And that's what I did with this. This is why I did a latex mold for this as well. Latex is dead cheap. If it all went wrong, I wouldn't be opening my wrists because I just spent probably. 500 quid to make a mould, I spent 20 quid to make a mould, a lot cheaper. So yeah, so... Silicon, that would be very expensive, is that what you Silicon is extraordinarily expensive, um, but you get the best results from it. It's all the varying degrees of how good you want something to look. Um, so like I say, the more competitive you are, if you want to get into competitions, the better you want something to look, the better materials. I mean, the, People say, oh, you're really, really skilled. That's why you won with Skepsil. I'd say, yes, I've got skill, but it's also because I used Hollywood grade materials for Skepsil. My Skepsis, the one you're across my Right, so this is, a, this is a cast in fiberglass. So what I've done is this, that, that mold originally had stupidly um, a Plaster of Paris, just like the just like the lion face. Plaster of Paris bandage mother mold, which that sat in. Um, I then actually pegged it to the edge just to hold it in place because it is still a little bit flippy floppy. Uh, and then I just laminated fiberglass in. I won't go into how to laminate fiberglass. Um, I can't demo it here for obvious reasons. I don't want to. Have a phone call six months down the line with people saying you gave me lung cancer. <laughs> um, it probably wouldn't have been from this, it probably would have been from something else. But, if, uh, but you, can kind of get, you, you can kind of get the idea of what I did by looking inside. Um, what I did first, you used something called a gel coat. Um, now, gel coats into latex again, not a good idea. So, inside the latex layer of PPA, it's not touching latex anymore. Uh, so a layer of gel coat. Now what gel coat does is it gives it a perfect surface. Second layer, really, really fine tissue. Uh, that stuff. So that's glass. That is actually glass. Um, but it's very, very thin little strands. Super, super, super thin. Um, then, because I didn't know better when I made that, I used chop strand mat, which is that. It's a bit like a, I don't know, it looks a bit like chop strand mat. Um, and that is basically the same as that, but bigger strands. Um, beauty of fiberglass is it'll bend round edges beautifully, you just kind of stab it in. YouTube videos everywhere, that's the best place to learn. However, now I know what I know, I wouldn't have used that. And you'll, he's gone. <laughs> he's not here. Space Moon Guy would know what I was talking about. I would have used that, which is chop, which is matte. Um, it's matte cloth, they call it matte cloth, and it looks like fabric. It's actually glass. That is actually glass strands woven into a mat. Reason is, it's stronger and lighter. Um, I had to go five thick on this, so five individual layers. Uh, I probably could have got away with two or three with that. Obviously, two or three, a lot less weight, um, a lot less resin would have gone into it. Polyester resin isn't expensive, that wasn't the problem. Weight is the problem. This doesn't feel heavy, but it adds to the costume. Um, and the more that adds to the costume, the more your legs start aching after wearing it for a few hours. So, yeah, so you can with five plus polyurethane. Um, however, there is something that 
that I'd imagine most of you in here have encountered at some point in your life used, and unless you've heard me talking about this before, or a certain guy who makes Guyver costumes, you know what I'm going to say next. You can use hot glue. Hot glue, the proper name, is thermoplast adhesive. Thermoplast, thermal plastic. It melts, it goes hard again. <coughs> so, back in my early days of, of making these things, when I couldn't really get access to resins because I didn't have the space to use them, couldn't use fiberglass because my parents were jerks and they wouldn't use the carriage or the back garden or anything. Uh, they wouldn't have let me use the village if they could have stopped me. Um, they believe in me now, funnily enough. <laughs> um, I used hot glue. Now I made an awful lot of things out of hot glue, but people always come up to me and say, whoa, that's really cool, what did you make it out of resin? No, hot glue. Uh, my original version of Briariosa's head, hot glue. Um, these little things on the back here, sort of cute little hot glue. It's a simple material. Um, of course, it's a bit dangerous. Don't fingers to sculpt with it, you can't burn yourself, it'll hurt, um, but yeah, well, so you don't need to be using complicated, yes? So with the hot glue, do you use the glue gun, do you use it from the gun, or do you use it for the little sort of melted hot glue? Right, there are different ways to do it, uh, if you're just going to make something, I mean, I, I, if you saw my werewolf yesterday, the claws are hot glue as well, I made a little latex mould, uh, I got the hot glue gun, stuck it in the bottom, and she went, pull. And what I did was I kept the nozzle underneath the hot glue as I brought it up, and I sort of like brought it out as it was filling up. Um, that just makes it so it, it flows rather than fills. You don't want to fill, you want it to flow over the surface. That way you get nice smooth and you don't get wrinkles. You know something big, like if you go to bioweapons.com and look at awesome guy with costumes, they're not so great now because people do better stuff, but back in the day, you saw him and you went, oh my god, I want to do that, that's amazing. Uh, it's actually the guy that I learned the method from as well. Um, what he does is he gets a pan, sticks it on his stove, gets all his glue sticks and goes chop, 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 chop into little bits, chucks them all in the pan, heats it up, and then goes, because <laughs> he doesn't want to get anywhere near the stuff. <laughs> Apparently he spilled it onto his lap once. There's a really funny anecdote about it. Um, he was really upset because it ruined his trousers. <laughs> I would have been really upset. I would have been really upset because of the third degree burns personally, but whatever floats your boat. Right. So yeah. So hot glue. Um, you can cast it in a simple way with. Fiberglass, if you just want something small and you want to be simple, you don't want to be complicated, you use all these complicated things, you can cast it with paper mache. So, it's, it's very brittle, but if you're just doing something small, like, um, come on, Phil, you're better than me at this. What, what, what would you cast with paper mache? I was going to go into polymorph. Polymorph is essentially the same thing as hot glue, actually, but it, it doesn't need to be as hot. And it needs water. So, okay. um, oh, what would I cast with? Again. To be to be honest, if I've been stuck, you can actually get stuff called resin reinforced glue. Uh, I think it's Bostic that makes it, and the result is actually quite tough. Um, if I couldn't have used fiberglass, I might have been. I might have made this in paper mache, in casting paper mache. Obviously I wouldn't be paper mache in that way, I'd be paper mache in that way. So I'd have a mould still and paper mache into the mould. Some sort of nice thick surface to hide it, probably a little bit of filler, something like that. Because it's basically going over a structure, because this, this isn't a part of me, it isn't going to get dinged in. This goes over something, it's actually got a structure underneath, so it's it's a lot safer. It probably is going to get dinged, it probably is going to get banged, but at the end of the day, unless you've spent ages doing a meticulous paint job on it, um, that, if it gets dinged and banged and it is, it is um, paper mache, you've got a mould. You should make a new one. Be careful before you get judged. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, Mr. Judge, if you made stuff out of paper mache and hot glue, and they say yeah. to you, what do you make that out of? And you say big mash and hot glue, and they're like, they're not going to be like, 
you'll be surprised if you do something simple and you do it well, you'll be surprised at what good reaction you get. Um, I mean, so I was in a church where you'd be more impressed if you use simple stuff and gain a good call to church. I do. Yeah. I do remember, I think it was a couple of years ago at Amicron, there was not Euro cosplay, but for the cosplay competition. I think the winners were two people who had actually used really simple things, and that's why they won, because they'd used it and they'd gotten such a great result out of it. Yeah, so yeah, you, you don't have to be complicated. Uh, I mean, I'd say things like, things like masks, no, paper mache doesn't work. I mean, I know from personal experience, actually, paper mache doesn't work. Uh, you'll get a wear or two out of it and then it'll disintegrate and you'll be gutted because you just spent so long and you'll be a cheap ass and reclaim the hair and the teeth you spent a lot of time sculpting. Um, uh, yeah. Um, right. Let's talk about something a little bit more complicated because I think it's time to have a bit of fun. Unfortunately, I can't demo this, but it's great. Right. Two moulds that are pretty much the same thing, whatever could that be? Uh, I've lost one. Karen had it. She, she picks these things up. To look like <laughs> you don't want your eye to look like that because oh, it, it looks all right, but it's a bit dead. You know, it's not really eye-ish. It looks like a picture of an eye. You want your eye to look like that. Whoa! It's got a glassy surface. It's a bit thick. Could have been doing. Could have done with being a bit thicker, but uh, yeah. If you want to, you can, we can actually pass this round. Um, this is a test piece. Don't worry if you drop it. I'll be making a much nicer one. Right. So the first step with that, um, I was lazy. Because um, screw, 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 sculpting the dome, find the dome, make a mould of it. So after weeks and weeks and weeks of being absolutely frustrated, not being able to find a dome, I was wandering through Poundland and there was a shelf full of the little fuckers. <laughs> what were they? Uh, they were actually food containers. Uh, <laughs> Poundland. Bastards. Um, Poundland is the barn. Poundland is the barn. I buy a lot of stuff from Poundland. Is the there anyone in this room who hasn't bought something from Poundland for a costume? <laughs> Unanimous. Um, so, yeah. So. I haven't brought it with me, uh, which was a bit dumb. I made, I well, didn't make, I got a dome, cut it off so it was just a dome, stuck it to a surface, put walls around it, poured silicon in, boom, I got a brick. Pop it out, I get a mould. So I've got a perfect mould of that. I did actually treat this, uh, what I did was I, I well, not this, but the original, I sanded it down beautifully so, because there was a little, there was a little like moulding, like nipple in the middle, so I sanded all that off, uh, sprayed it with car lacquer so it was beautiful and shiny, because I wanted a beautiful shiny finish. Um, surface of your, ma uh, actually that's an important thing, surface of your master transfers to silicon, so if you want it matte, make it nice and matte, if you want it shiny, make it nice and shiny your end result will be the same. So if you look in this mould, this mould is actually beautiful and shiny and full of dust, which is a shame. Beautiful, beautiful, shiny. So the obvious thing is, if I want a layer of clear resin on the surface, I can cast the white bit in there, but I need to put a layer on, so what do I do? Do I do I pour the clear in first, then the white in later? How will I paint that on there? It doesn't make sense. How do you do it? What you do, it's really obvious, but it's quite sort of, 
it's, it's the sort of thing that's obvious, but only obvious once a genius realises it. <laughs> Uh, and I wasn't a genius, I'll disclaim that now, I wish I was, because I'd be very rich now. You make one of them. So, you make your dead, boring, dull, white line. And then, whilst you're making that, you do a second mould. And what you do is you get two of the objects. So I've got two of the lids, glued them together, made another mould. That. So now, because the two weren't perfectly in line with each other, one was standing proud of the other, so you've got one, then two, the theory is there will be a gap, a gap of air between the two. So if you look in that mould, there's actually a little wall all the way around where basically the bottom one was sitting. So, we can pass these two moulds around, I think, now. Now that I've described them, pass them around together and people can see it. So the one with the little wall with the little the little holes around the outside, that's the second one, that's the original. Right, so you've got the mould, got two moulds, so you mould your first one, you paint it up, you then pop that into the second mould. So what I do is I leave little tabs so it'll sit in, so it won't go any deeper than it's meant to. Then you've got the little holes and the little, you have a little gap around the edge. And you get clear resin, clear polyester resin. Now, clear polyester resin, but has anyone ever tried to use clear polyester resin before? Negative response. Right, clear polyester resin sounds like a great idea. You'll be able to make gems out of it. It's wonderful. You'll do this. Oh, brilliant. It's the answer to all my prayers. What they don't tell you is if you use clear polyester resin, straight out of the thing, just mix it up and pour it in, it'll be bubble eater. Like, it'll be like a bottle of lemonade. And that's what a lot of these gifts that make all these gems don't tell you. Because they'll, these guys will sell you the masters and you'll try it and you'll go, I can't do it anyway, I'll buy the gem from you made. What they don't tell you is they're using a piece of kit like this. What I'm basically telling you here is don't be ripped off by buying masters. If you don't want to buy a piece of kit like this, just buy the pre-made gems. They use a piece of kit called like this. The actual purpose of this is spraying paint. Uh, the purpose I use it for, and that's why I've got little bones on this weird little contraption here, is pressure casting. Resin is thicker than water and thicker than air, but air will be trapped in it. <coughs> However, if you subject it to pressure, it will crush, and the air will go, don't want to be here anymore, I want out, and it will escape. Yeah, it will escape through, basically, if you look at that mould, it will escape through the little air uh, pockets. And you put a little reservoir, of, a little reservoir of resin in the top and the resin gets sucked in. So basically what you'd do is you'd open this guy up, pop the lid off. Inside, it's just an empty thing, there's no magic. I made a little base because it's got a little round base, which was a bit annoying to put moulds in. Um, Mmm, polyester resin in there. <laughs> you can smell that. Um, so you put your, you put your resin mold in everything. Close it up. Oh, screw it up. Attach it to a nice big compressor. Fill it up. Close it off. Leave it. Walk away. Leave it for a few days. That's the other thing with clear resin. Even if you are going to do it, and you don't mind the bubbles. Clear resin. Clear resin cures in a few hours. Clear resin fully cures in about five days. If you pull clear resin from a mould too early, it will be gummy and sticky. And you will put fingerprints in it and blah. That's why that test eye is actually a bit crappy on the surface. Um, so yeah, um, basically what I'm saying is clear resin is actually a very, very tricky process. But it is doable at home. The kit is expensive, 
But if you're going to do a lot of it, it will pay for itself eventually. And a compressor, um, never think of buying a, a piece of kit like a compressor as a single purpose object. So if you, if you buy a compressor, you can use it for spraying as well. You can use it for an air attachment. If you've got a car, you can use it to pump your tyres up. It's if you're doing that for hours. Um, I personally use a 25 litre compressor. It's a mid-sized thing, but it's a godsend. It's really good for getting rid of cobwebs in your garage as well. I found that. You put the air attachment on. You feel like you eradicating the world with dirt. Um, this little piece of compressors you can pick up for about 200 quid and they will pay for themselves uh, because there's so much you can do with them. Uh, this little piece of kit is about 170 quid and if, again if you're going to do a lot of casting and you want it to be perfect casting and you want it to be beautiful and you don't want any bubbles in your clear resin or even your standard resin because bubbles in the standard resin will cause them to be weak and fracture. Um, doesn't matter if it's a thing that you're going to wear a few times or use a few times, but if you're going to make something beautiful that you want to last, pressure tanks are good investment. They will do you well. Um, they are really hard to find though. Um, Axminster. Axminster for that, eBay for your compressor. <coughs> Cold enough to pull yet. What can I talk about next? Has anyone got any questions? Um, is there anything interesting that happens if you try it with your own to try putting it in the bag to be You will add bubbles. They expand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is another interesting thing that I didn't actually touch on. I, I haven't actually done it, I don't own one, because you can get around it by doing a thin stream. When you're pouring silicon, you might hear, if you go back home and look on YouTube, you might hear people talking about vacuum chambers. What a vacuum chamber does is, if you put silicon in a vacuum, it causes it to foam rapidly, but then, for some reason, it crushes and all the bubbles get eradicated out of it. You can do it in a pressure chamber as well, but it doesn't work quite as well. But the thing is with resin, if you're using fairly pourable resin anyway, uh, I mean, the way I do it, the way I pour a resin is I do it from sort of like personal height. I'll have my thing on the floor, I will carefully, carefully go down to the cup, start pouring it, get my point and raise it and pour into the mould from about this height. So you're talking about five foot, six foot, and you'll get this, pour in this very thin sort of string or this stream, very slow, very gentle. Casting silicons take quite a while to cure. Um, prosthetic silicons, if anyone gets into prosthetic silicons, they're a lot 